up fellas and ladies this video is about sanding a cylinder head at home all right it is not against machine shops at all there's one i go to they do a lot of good work for me but i'm also an independent person you know what i'm saying so this video is for those who ain't afraid of hard work and it's not for those who want to complain and whine all right this is for those who want to keep things old school or who want to try new things and who don't give up all right so if you don't like hard work if you don't like the old school ways if you feel like you're entitled to have everything go easy for you this video ain't for you man all right so before you start complaining and whining just recognize man this is old school i didn't make it up all right i'm just bringing it back all right so let's handle it okay check this out i just cut out these two pieces here this is particle board with a uh a topping on it so what i did is this took it over here scrape it like that okay you're moving the block like this all right then when i do all the edges i do the corners like this I just scraped it like that then you're going to end up with the smooth round edges all the way around here that way the sandpaper can fold over the edge and not hang down so much so it won't catch on the engine block or the cylinder head just like that let it sit like that for a little bit let it get tacky and that's it right there okay you're gonna press outward like that so now I'm gonna let this dry let it sit overnight now I'm gonna use this stapler here all right Got the edges over. Just sink them down right here. In there. You really don't need one here in the center, but I'm putting it anyway. Overkill. It's better to be over than under. There you have it right there. Two sanding blocks. One for the block, one for the cylinder head. 208. Okay, it's 208 right now. Watch how fast it takes to sand this cylinder head right here. I'm gonna set this down right here. 208. Ready? WD-40 and 80 grit sandpaper. Ready? Here we go. Go like that. Get it on here. Remember, we were off a little bit. Make sure when you do this, you go all the way from end to end. Okay? All the way. Watch how fast, how much material we just took off. Okay? I'm moving the block, angling it also at the same time. Okay, watch this. Slowly, we are slowly taking up material. Okay, little by little. All that gasket material is gone, but we're not done sanding yet. So now, come over here. Now come over here and clean off all this stuff. This is all the, the, this is all the material, the aluminum, from that aluminum head. This also works with cast iron too. Remember, keep all this lubed up. Keep all this lubricated so uh, this won't rust up on you because if you don't keep this lubricated, it'll rust, okay? And it'll rust fast on you. Okay, this is it right here. This is the last part. After this, we're not gonna use this block anymore. Okay, ready? That was 208, 209 right now, okay? Go again. Hit it like that. Hit this. This is revolutionary right here, man. Ready? Let's go again. Remember, go all the way from end to end with the block. This is fast, extremely fast. We're gonna have this head flat, a true flatness in no time. Wow. 
Like this up. See how fast that happens? That is quick. Now rinse this. Flip it. Do it again. Clean, clean, hit it again. Go. Pressing down in the middle of the block. That way I can distribute the weight equally throughout the block. I'm going at an angle. I'm moving at an angle. Okay. That was the third sand right there. Well, whatever you call it. That was the third sanding attempt. You can just tell we're getting flatter and flatter. All the low spots are, are starting to disappear little by little. That's how you sand the cylinder head, man. Uh, rinse this. This takes about, sometimes it takes about five times, five to eight. Okay, it doesn't take that long, man. It goes fast. See all that aluminum is in there now. Okay, let's hit it again. Let's go at it again. That. That. Let's do it again. Catching every single area of the cylinder head. Okay? This side and this side. Don't miss nothing. Okay? Keep that hand moving. All around. Let's check the time right now. Then we're gonna check the warping. Okay, there's that. Sometimes that sandpaper will rip. That's alright, man. Just add new paper to it, or well, sandpaper. Okay. Look at that, all the, uh, the low spots, man. All the low spots are starting to disappear. Just rinse this. You gotta get what I'm saying? That's how fast you can do this stuff, man. You don't gotta take it to the machine shop. Okay, but it's your choice. Let's see what time it is now. 2.14. We started at 2.09, is that right? How long was that? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14? Five minutes. Five minutes. Show me. Five minutes is what this took. Now let's check it. Okay. Checking it to see if it's done. Okay, now let's check it. I like that. I like that. This one wants to go under barely. Okay, that one too. Now let's go right here. Okay. Good. Good. Look at that, man. That is good right there. That's all good. Now, this is the worst parts. On most cylinder heads, these always slip through, okay? When you're going straight like that. Okay, so now, check this in. Kinda wants to go. Kinda wants to go. That's good to go though right there, man. Look at that. Okay, I still got to sand a little bit more, but I just wanted to show you the speed of how fast this stuff happens. Okay, what time is it? It is 2.16. So 2.09, 10, 11, 12, 13, 
14, 15, 16, 18, I mean eight minutes ago, we started sanding this. Look how fast we got down to that. Three more of these hits, three more of these passes, this thing is done. I do the same thing with the engine block. But then I use a 150 grit sandpaper to finish this, okay? So you're talking about sanding this cylinder head less than 20 to 30 minutes, okay? I'm not gonna show you all that right now. I'm still gonna keep going. But that's how fast you can sand this thing. So just keep that in mind. That's just another DIY tip that I'm giving you guys that I do that works. Okay, to reinforce this, what I also use is this copper gasket spray. This is good stuff. This is high temp stuff. Some people use it, some people don't. I do, okay? But make sure you use a MLS gasket, okay? Multiple layered steel head gasket. That's uh, just like this. Just like this, but uh, it has like three layers, okay? This has two, I think. And use the good stuff. This looks like a cheap gasket right here, all right? I don't know what this, I can't even tell what brand this is. Don't use that cheap stuff, all right? Use the good stuff. So that's just another tip for you guys. So you can go out there and smash on thing. You save money. And that's how you sand a cylinder head. At home, old school style. All right? I didn't make that up, man. That is old school. Okay? I'm just bringing back the old school. Some of you guys are going to trip because you're so conditioned to the new technology. I don't have nothing against technology. But I'm old school, man, and that's how I keep most of the stuff I do. I'm also new school too, but mostly for the most part, everything I do, I keep it old school, man. Straight up, just like the Bible, you know? Strictly King James right here, all right? King James only. I don't read none of that new stuff, man. The new international version, the English standard version, the amplified version, I don't mess with that stuff, man. God said if any man changes or adds to this book, to the words in this book, let him be cursed. That's why I don't play around with that new stuff, man. The new age stuff. So before you start complaining and whining about me resurfacing that cylinder head, man, kill that noise. Man. Some of you have been so conditioned and so spoiled to the way things are today that you forget about the roots of how all this stuff started. Yes, you forget about the roots. The roots are the old school ways of how things started and how things began. I'm just taking it back and that's how I keep it, all right? Now let's go deep and talk about the subjects of what's going down today. We got racism just increasing like crazy. Yes, this is the part where I speak about Jesus. First of all, man, I ain't gonna stop talking about Jesus Christ. You come to this channel, man, but I ain't against you coming to this channel. I ain't against any atheists, I ain't against anybody. I'm preaching the word of God and I'm fighting for your soul, straight up. I'm showing you everything that I've been through. I'm showing you things on cars, and then I'm giving you the gospel. Only thing I'm asking is for you, put God first. Put Jesus Christ first. Now let's go deep on the subject of what's going on today in this world. We got police shooting people, people shooting police, an increase in crime, corruption, unemployment, extreme poverty, prison systems expanding. We got more prisons than colleges. We got more liquor stores on every single corner, especially in the hoods. Then we do churches. We got an increase in drug addiction, alcoholism, murders. Man, can you see what's going on right now? Can you see what's happening? You don't got to be saved in order to see what's going down today. The world is spiraling down into more darkness. And it's getting more evil and more wicked. And let me show you why, man. So when you hear me talking about God, this is why I'm telling you why. You gotta pull out. You gotta get out of that frame of mind in that humanistic thinking to where you think you run the show. You don't run the show, straight up. God is still on the throne. And that's all I'm telling you guys. When I'm talking about Jesus, I'm talking about God Almighty, man. God is still on the throne and he's still running the show, regardless of what you think. And another thing, God is not mocked. So all you guys talking about Jesus can suck a, you know what I'm saying? Talking about God is this, God is that, God ain't, 
You know what I'm saying? Cursing God's name. The Bible says God is not mocked. No matter how much you try to mock God, no matter how much you try to clown, you ain't getting away with it, man. But it's not, it's not even funny, man, because what you're doing is you're cursing yourself. Yes, you're cursing yourself and, and you're just digging yourself a deeper hole in the pit of despair, man, straight up. And you're pulling yourself further and further away from Jesus Christ. Each time you speak like that, man, straight up. It don't phase me, man. I'm just telling you straight up, you ain't gonna sit there and mock God and think you're gonna get away with it. God is not mocked is what the Bible says. What that means is that no matter how much you attempt to try to belittle the word of God or try to sound all articulate and intelligent about why God does not exist, that man, none of that. You can't even put a dent in the word of God on stopping it. You may laugh all you want to laugh when you're mocking God, but you're only hurting yourself, man. Straight up. Recognize that. Now let's get to the point of the world and what's going down. Watch this. 2 Timothy 3, 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, bolsters, proud, I mean proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. That's describing a wicked and fallen dark world. That right there, 2 Timothy 3, 1. 2 Timothy 3, 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now, here's the problem with what's going on in the world. God created the world, man rebels, God calls people back. God says in the Bible, before you were born, before I formed thee, I knew thee before you came out of the womb. So God already had a plan for your life. God already had a purpose. But what happens is we drift away from that because of the conditioning and the anti-God messages and bombardment of anti-Christ stuff going on every single day in society. Whether it comes from TV, music, your favorite actor, your favorite musician, the arts, all kinds of stuff. Whether it's the media, the school system, laws that have been changed, like the homosexual marriage, they got approved. Man, that's why society is going nutty. That's why society is tripping and everything is going bad. Because we have turned our back on God, big time. Second Timothy 4, 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, right there. There it is right there, there's the problem. After their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. It says, but after their own lust, they shall turn away. That means that your human nature, your desires and things that appease you, you want something other than God to fill the void that only God can fill. You understand that? We seek after things, money, car, girls, riches, lying, cheating, adultery, pills, drugs, alcohol, just to fill the void. When you do that, when you chase all that stuff and you push God off to the side, what happens is you, you don't have any soundness, man. The Bible says, for God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. When you don't have Christ and you ain't talking to God, you're gonna receive anything outside the will of God. You're gonna hear stuff that's not from God and you're gonna believe it. If you ain't reading this Bible, if you ain't learning, if you ain't asking God for understanding and wisdom about the Bible and what's going down in the world, remember this Bible is for life. This has every single thing you need to know about and how you need to tackle things in life. If you ain't reading it, the world is gonna tell you what it says. And if the world tells you what this says, Eh, screwed up, all right?
There is no reincarnation, man. You ain't coming back for the second try, the third try, fourth try, just to reach Nirvana. That ain't happening, man. That's a lie from the pit. You ain't gonna make it to heaven by just making stuff up. You know what I'm saying? The word is the word. This is all truth right here. Right here, look. 2 Timothy 3, 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Right there, that's the doctrine, straight up. This is the written word of God. This is the living written word of God. When you read this, you get edified. There is no book on this in the earth that can even come close to this because this is the written word of God. When you read this, God will speak to you. God will probe your heart. He'll tell you things that are going down and what he wants you to take away from your life that's destroying your life and keeping you further and further away from him. That's the problem of the world today, man. That's what's going on. People don't ever want to turn to God. They're thinking, oh, black lives matter, white lives matter, Mexican lives matter, all lives matter, man. And in the eyes of God, you are precious, man. God does not want you dying in sin, man. God's heart aches when you withdraw from him, when you reject him, when you hear messages like this, man. He's not against you. A lot of people blame everything on God. It's not God that's making all this stuff happen, man. God gave you free will. You have the ability to do what you want. God's not gonna force you to love him, but God doesn't want you to fall outside the 10 commandments, man. You get it? There are laws and statutes in here that you have to abide by. And they're not suggestions, man. They're commandments. In order for you to live your life right in the, and live within the purpose of what God made you to be like and what, what he put you here for. Check this out. There are seven powerful influences in the world that affect and have a profound effect on your life. The way you think, your perceptions, your ideologies, everything. One, family. Two, education. Three, the arts and entertainment industry. Four, media. Five, the government. Six, business. Seven is religion. It don't have to be in that order, but those are the seven things that affect your lifestyle and the way you think. Family, the way you grew up. Some of you grew up in a nice, loving family to where you taught to love others. Some of you grew up in a family where you're taught to hate other people, other races, other skin colors. Some of you were taught to not respect a certain group of people. Some of you were taught racism from your daddy, from your mama, from your uncle, from your, your auntie. So, that's just one area. Education, now they're teaching in schools, man, they're teaching homosexuality, they're teaching uh, transgender, it's okay, being whoever you wanna be, who you think you are. If you're born a male and you think you're a female, that's perfectly fine. Now they're debating on letting grown men who are transgender go into the girl's bathroom. I have a baby girl, you gotta see my daughter. I don't want no man in that bathroom while my daughter's in there. Uh -uh. I'm against that law, straight up. Arts and entertainment, man. Movies, music, oh man, it's just, that's where you get fed, man. That's where a lot of us are getting fed all of our input and information about God, about life, about everything. Lust, sex, everything, man. You know, just filth, man. That area is just filled with filth, big time, man. You guys see it, all you gotta do is turn the TV on. Turn it to MTV, right away, bam. All you see is wickedness, man, straight up evil, big time. Media, oh man. You know how the media is. News, news, news. Negativity, negativity, negativity. You've been seeing how, you see how they show all this negativity all the time? That's all they show in the news, man. Pure negativity. Man gets killed today. Man gets killed today. Man gets killed today. Woman kills a man. Man kills, you know what I'm saying? So much. The media is filled with filth. Don't even watch that junk, man. Anyways, we're getting fed this stuff, man. And a lot of it's lies that we're being told. The media is showing us all this stuff that's just adding fuel to the fire on racism, man. Big time. They are feeding us all this junk, man. If you ever heard of propaganda, that's exactly what the media does. All media does that, all right? First of all, they give us half truth. Second of all, they don't give us enough information. 
third of all, they're telling us lies. Fourth, and it's pure negativity, man. So you understand the powerful influence of the media, government, one word, corruption, man. Big time corruption. Not all government, but a lot of the government, straight up corrupt, man. Big business from the pharmaceutical industry to the food industry. All this MSG and GMOs, genetically modified organisms, the scientists tampering with seeds and the crops. Man, look up Monsanto's. You know what I'm talking about, man. Monsanto's is a seed corporation full of scientists just making some wacky stuff today, man. The pharmaceutical industry telling us to pop pills to feel better. Man, giving you pills for one thing, but tearing up your liver. On the other hand, man, straight up wrong, man. Telling you you need to take these specific pills to make you all right, to make you feel better. Then you got religion, straight up. There are so many religions, man. There's, there's thousands, thousands. How do you know which one's which, man? This book right here. This is the inspired word of God, right here, okay? When the children of Israel got freed, you know the story of Moses in Egypt? When the children of Israel got freed from Egypt, God had told them, when you go to the land, learn not the ways of the heathen, because the heathens were pagans. And the pagans, what they did is they worshiped false gods. Got a show that's coming out called The Gods of Egypt. Interesting, huh? Yeah, Egypt is full of gods. And what that is, is the old ancient Babylonian teachings and philosophies that started way back at the beginning. Anyways, this word right here, the word of God, the inspired word of God. Stick with it, you can't go wrong with it. Old school, keep it old school. Let's go back to the upbringing now. It was affecting society. If you hang around, let me see, you hang around people like Farrakhan or Tom Metzger, National Socialist Movement, you know what I'm saying? Of course, your perceptions, your ideas are gonna be affected by that. You hang around Louis Farrakhan, man, Muslim thing. You are going to, your ideas about other races are gonna definitely be affected and be influenced by those specific people. You see what I'm saying, you get it? If your upbringing is corrupt and you're hanging around the wrong people who don't understand about the right morals. See, there's biblical morals, then there's other morals that are non-biblical. You know what I'm saying? Your morals, your ethics are formed by those seven areas in life. And if you've been conditioned to reject God, you will absolutely live like that. You will live your lifestyle without Christ. Then you're gonna be in a world of trouble. You're gonna think you're all right, but you ain't gonna be all right. Because you've been taught that you'll be all right if you don't live with God. You don't need God. That's a lie from the pit, straight up. So you say you got good morals, but at the same time, you hate your brother, your neighbor? What kind of morals are those? What kind of ethics is that? You know what I'm saying? There's your morals, then there's God's morals. See what I'm saying? You change things around, you switch things up, you change the, the words in this book, you change the ideas, you change the word of God in your heart. You can't change the word of God, first of all. You can't change his truth. But you change it in your heart, Things are gonna be all screwed up, straight up. So it comes down to this, whoever you give your consent to, whoever you give your power to, that is exactly what you become. That is exactly how you live. That is exactly how you think. That will become your ideology. And that is that, straight up. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Whatever you're putting inside that heart, that is exactly the way you will speak the way you will become, the way you will act. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks straight up. That is where the problem is today. And it's called humanism. Man is so relying upon themselves to push God outside. Man is so, man is so high strong on keeping God out of our school systems, out of government, out of everything. We have screwed up. And that's why we live in a world full of chaos so much hate people hating on each other because of all these negative influences that are impacting our lifestyles people keep saying what's the answer we need to get together we need to form groups we need to we need to form coalitions and everything to make things better 
We need to write the government. We need to write new bills and all that. No, we need Jesus Christ to fix this. We are so far gone, man, that we are dwindling downwards on a downward slope. And there ain't nothing that can help that but God Almighty. Straight up. That is the answer. And the only answer that's going to fix all this chaos in this world. <sighs> but it starts with you. You have a choice. You don't have to wait for people. You can call on God right now and repent and get baptized, man. God will start showing you and teaching you, telling you, prompting your heart. You know, getting rid of all the junk, all the chaos, all the lies you've been taught. Straight up. He'll start teaching you and showing you. He'll give you understanding, man. You go to Proverbs in here, man. Psalms and Proverbs. Read that. You know, God will start showing you things. So what you do is you call on God. He'll pull you out the darkness, man. So you can start seeing what's really going down. All right? That's what happened with me. What you got to do is this. Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of sins. Your sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that's what it is right there. And once you do that, check this out. Who we at here? Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn away from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. That's it right there. That's the answer, man, straight up. People wanna make up all this complicated stuff on what we need to do in order to fix the world, fix things. All these humanitarian efforts. Humanitarian is just totally against God, man. It's man saying that we can do this without God. Uh-uh, uh-uh, it ain't gonna happen. Look how far we have come. Look how deep of a ditch we have dug ourselves saying we don't need God involved. Humanism, straight up. So, that's the problem right there with the world. We'll get deeper on that in another video, but for now, that is what exactly is going down, and that's the only way that these problems in this world can be fixed, and that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. So get your heart right with God. Don't play games, man. So in Jesus' mighty, holy name, Stay smashing out there, man. Don't give up. Don't back down. Listen to what I'm telling you about God, man. Don't play. Don't play it with your soul, man. In his mighty holy name, Jesus Christ, go smash on it.